take a quick moment to acknowledge our audience. A warm welcome to all the followers of French League, the leading digital platform for American Francophiles. I am thrilled to introduce our expert today, Fabien. Bonjour, Fabien. Hello. Fabien Pellissier from Fab Insurance. During this one hour webinar, we will discuss the, the differences, application process, and requirements for long stay visa, 12 months, or temporary long stay visa for six months for France, including different types depending on personal circumstances. We will also address the health insurance requirements, considerations for pre existing conditions, costs for policies, implications after gaining residence. Fabien will also explain the French complementary health insurance system. We will also have a Q&A session where our expert will be answering your questions that you can send anytime during this webinar. Moving to France, long stay visas and health insurance webinar. Could you, Fabien, as an introduction, uh, present five insurance and uh, outline the, the services and expertise that you offer? Sure, yeah. So um, I've created Fab Insurance uh, in 2015. Uh, the goal uh, very quickly was to help the English speaking community uh, while moving to France or those who were already in France to actually uh, help them through the intricacies of the French system, the French administrative system mostly, because we all know that France is one of the easiest country admin wise. <laughs> so yeah, so the goal, so obviously we will focus on the insurance bit or insurance bits. Uh, so, you know, the, the, the insurance that comes with a visa application, but also car insurance, property insurance, because obviously, culturally speaking, this is very different from what um, expats are used to in their own country, especially considering that the law itself is different instead of the common law, uh, France operates on a different level. So yeah, we've helped them with the um, insurance, uh, if everything insurance related, and yeah, in 20, well, since COVID, basically, we've moved up the ladder a bit, uh, helping also them with uh, everything that's, you know, admin related. So importing a vehicle, driving license exchange, obviously the visa application and all that stuff, you know, all the thing that can seem dreadful. Uh, but we always manage to get through uh, if done properly, of course. Let us start uh, with the with the visa, uh, Fabien, if you please. Uh, what what is the difference between a long stay visa, uh, which is a year, and, and uh, this is weird that the verbiage is weird. Temporary long stay visa of six months. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. you 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 can be more correct. I mean, we'll see that uh, probably later on in in the conversation as well. The, the wording is confusing sometimes in France. Doesn't mean it's not the proper one. So short-term visa is a six-month visa. So first, uh, let's address the issue. Uh, the 90 days, it's called the 9180 days rule. So everyone, especially coming from the US, so France has agreements, have agreements with different, different countries, including the US, where someone from the US can come to France for 90 days, up to 90 days, every 180 days, okay? Um, so as long as you don't, exceed that duration you don't need a visa that's the first thing but if you do want to exceed the 90 days per six month period basically uh you would need to apply for a visa and then you would have basically two uh, options well more than two but two i mean categories of visas you can apply for the first one is the six month visa the one called temporary and the other one is the 12 month visa called the long stay visa the six month visa um, to be honest, we don't do much of these because it's very specific usage. Because the problem is, it's a, it's not six months within a year; it's a six month period. Hmm. Um, so most of the time, it doesn't fit the bill because you probably want to, you know, come and go all through the year uh, instead of just for six months straight. Uh, and also on top of that, the six month visa is a non renewable visa. There is like a cool off period before you can reapply for another one. So for people, for example, that have a second house in France that they just want to come more than 90 days per year, um, does usually doesn't cut the bill. It could, but yeah. So that's why we don't do it. Most of the time we had of doing the 12 month visa because requirements are pretty much similar. Doesn't cost um, much more to actually get the 12 month visa done. Uh, it's easy to renew. 
and well, it's renewable and it's easy to renew. So that's basically the main difference. One is a fixed period, six month, a non-renewable with a cool off period. And the other is a 12 month period that can be renewed pretty much forever. And the 12 month visa can actually become a residency permit. And you can come to France with the 12 month visa uh, and end up being a permanent resident. The first point you are strongly recommending uh, us uh, to go for the long stay visa, which is 12 months. So how does somebody go about applying for uh, such a visa? So, well, it depends on the situation. Sometimes a six month visa may be um, a good choice. Uh, it's just that for sake of convenience, we very often end up advising the 12 month visa. So it's just to address that. But yeah, so, well, France has done quite a lot of progress, digitally speaking. So the application is now done online or can be done online on a website called francevisa.gov.fr, basically the official governmental website. Um, and everything can be de dealt with online. This is very cool uh, from a French perspective. You know, we, we're no longer chopping down trees <laughs> and printing tons of paperwork. Um, but you you'll still need to attend to a physical, like in-person uh, interview uh, at a local visa center, which in the US, uh, it's so the consulate or the embassy is dealing with this, but they, they've subcontracted um, that process to a private company called in the US, this is VFS, TLS in the UK, VFS in the US and other countries. So you'll need to go to a VFS center. Um, they, they, they're quite a bit in the US. Yeah. Physically, you said, right? You need to go Physically, to yeah, you'll have. So the people that actually come to France and say, oh, I'd like to stay for longer. Well, then, unfortunately, they have to come back for the interview until they can get the visa done. So that's why we always advise, don't go to France if, we, if you intend to stay for more than 90 days. Well, unless you, you're happy to pay a round trip uh, ticket. Uh, but this is quite an expense uh, that you can avoid. And also... Uh, there is no guarantee that you'll get your visa straight away. So maybe you'll have to stay in the US for a longer period than expected. So that's why it's best to plan ahead. From my uh, understanding, Fabien, there are three main uh, tests uh, to get a long-term visa. What, what are they? So obviously you, you'll need quite, it depends on the type because I've mentioned the type of visa, the short-term, long-term visa. And then within the long-term visa and within the, the short-term visa as well, you need a reason for a stay, okay? So you have subcategories of visa, the business visa, the entrepreneur visa, so the entrepreneur visa, family visa, uh, visitor visa, which is actually the retirement visa, for example, things like so. Uh, all the visas have different uh, requirements, but uh, there are basically always three tests that I want to make sure uh, you will be able to check. So the first one is, Obviously, if you apply for a long-term visa, you need to have a permanent address in France. And an Airbnb uh, booking or an hotel booking will not cut it. You will need a permanent address. So this could be a rental property you have, oh, so, sorry, <clears throat> a second home or actually a home you, you've purchased. This could be a rental agreement. Uh, it's a very good idea. Most of the time, if you're buying a property in France, usually the seller will be more than happy to actually write a leasing agreement uh, so that you'll have uh, a contract that you can use for residency in France. And it, you're not very committed, uh, even if you don't get your visa, because in France, uh, you can terminate a lease agreement within one month. So that, that's usually a trick. So the first one is the proof of address. But, but still, uh, let, let's stop just a, few, a minute about that proof of address, because in terms of timeline, it means that you already need to be established before asking for the visa. It might it might seem uh, kind of awkward in a way. Yeah, but it does make sense in a way. That, that basically, they want to make sure you're not homeless. You will not be homeless. So if you intend to come to France, you need to have a French address. But again, um, you can do that um, remotely. You know, for example, finding a property and negotiate a lease agreement uh, that can be done even without you being around. That, that can be done. Obviously, buying a property probably will involve you to come uh, to, to come to France physically, but uh, renting a property may not necessarily require this. So uh, you can also, if you have family or person, you know, in France, can also be hosted for free and use their address uh, as yours. Uh, this would be acceptable. 
Uh, although I would be cautious with that because the problem is then every processes you'll have to do, you know, like legal processes you'll have to do in France will then consider that address and the local prefecture, which is basically the, the place where you should uh, deal with all the paperwork immigration wise. So that would be the prefecture from that area. So if you friends, for example, they are in Paris and you actually want to buy near uh, in the Nice area, uh, then you'll have to do the trip physically to go to Paris to get the things done. So that's why um, being hosted uh, for free uh, can be done, or it, it, it's better if they are in the same area you, you're you considering moving to. So the second test, yeah, sorry, just resuming on that. So the second test, the first one is then the proof of address. The second test is the proof of income. And um, Whatever the situation, one way or another, you'll need to demonstrate that you will not be a burden to the state. So if, if this is a work visa, you'll need to have a work contract, which will prove you'll have income. Uh, if this is an entrepreneur visa, so a business visa, you will need to create a business plan, which will uh, kind of prove to them that uh, you will make money, which will allow you to have a sustainable presence in France. Uh, and if this is, for example, a visitor visa, which could be considered as a retiree visa or just, you know, it can be on a sabbatical or whatever, uh, then they want to make sure that you'll have income. Uh, it's So then it's either passive income, you know, like a pension or you have dividends, whatever, whatever the source of income, you may have rental properties. They want to make sure you meet at least the French um, minimum wage, which is basically 1300, uh, 1300 uh, per month, sorry. Or if you don't have like um, ongoing income or, or, you know, passive income, then they require you to have the equivalent of that lump sum uh, as savings. Okay. But it needs to be available savings. You know, it, it, if it's savings that, that is locked, I mean, for example, you, you've purchased a property, you say, well, I have two millions worth of properties. They, they won't accept this because it's not liquid savings. You cannot withdraw uh, from, um, I mean, that, that saving, I would say, um, like instantly. So they want to make sure you have, again, I run up the numbers, but basically uh, 25,000 euros on the side or a monthly income uh, that totals to the minimum wage. And the third bit and the third test is the proof of insurance. Uh, they, because obviously when you come to France, um, after 90 days, you can apply for the French social security system, which we call the, the, the CPAM. But then it takes like on average six months, but it, it varies massively. So uh, let's say usually within nine months, you can get into the French system, but again, can vary massively. Uh, so for, for that period, you're not covered. And travel insurance will, will not cover you for more than 90 days. So they want to make sure you're covered for the one year application of your visa for that whole period. Uh, then that's why when you renew, it's much easier because then you'll be probably part of the French system. So everything will be uh, much easier to secure. The policies will be cheaper, but that's why you need something that's basically kind of the equivalent of the French social security system until you're part of the French social security system. So here are the three tests, proof of address, proof of income, proof of insurance. If you meet these three tests, it's highly likely that the visa uh, will be successful. So if you meet these three tests, Fabien, um, you have to consider what is the long stay visa available for your own uh, situation, basically. There are different ones. How do I know which one is the right one for me? Well, and obviously it depends on on each individual's situation. Um, some are obvious. When, when you are moving to work to France, you have an employment contract, this will be a work visa, this one is obvious. If you are setting up a business in France, this could be a business visa, although uh, this is one of the most uh, complex visas. So I like to you know, assess the situation, see if there aren't other options available. Uh, the most popular one is the visitor visa because the requirements are very, very low. Uh, it's very simple to me. The, the, the three things I've mentioned, if you can meet these three requirements, these three tests, visitor visa is by far and large the easiest to secure. Um, but then there is a talent visa if you are the son of Elton John or, I don't know, <laughs> you know, uh, if you have something that you can bring to France that has value, or if you're, if you're the spouse or someone that's coming to France, 
you know, for example, uh, you, you are an engineer, a nuclear engineer, you're coming to France and, and you're the spouse of that person, then you'll be able to get a talent visa, things like that. So obviously this needs to be decided uh, based on the situation, but the, the three more popular plans, uh, family visa, if you have a relative in the EU or in France, uh, the visitor visa is the most uh, popular one, and the business visa is very popular as well, but very tricky. This is the only one where you can see rejections on a regular basis because it needs to be done properly to make sure uh, you won't be denied. Because with the business visa, they are very careful because obviously you're like, yeah, you can create a business plan saying, oh, I'll be bigger than Facebook in one year's time. Uh, obviously you can say whatever you want. The problem is after the one year, you'll go to the prefecture for your interview and they'll take your business visa, uh, your, your business plan, sorry. And then I'll say, okay, well, you were saying you'd be making a million. Uh, how much have you done? And if you're like, oh, I've done 50,000, but it, it's it's going well. No, okay, uh, we may not renew your visa. You, you, you've cheated or you've tried to sell something that you could not actually provide. So that's why this one is a very important to not be too optimistic and be realistic with the application. And for this one, this is the only one where I advise working with you know immigration lawyers or consultants such as ourselves, because this one is, is really tricky. Mm -hmm. Let, let's take a specific example. Let's say that I'm a, a U.S. citizen. Uh, my wife is French. Um, do I need a visa to join her in France? Well, the short answer is uh, no. But I again, you have to understand that a visa application is probably going to cost something like 350 euros. Uh, so total, what? yeah, 350. So it's, it's, quite, it's quite cheap. Let's say um, so. Very often, uh, well, again, it depends because there are strict rules. If you if you want to come with the spouse, you need to travel with the spouse uh, each and every time you enter France or you leave France for that matter. Uh, because otherwise, if you enter France on your own uh, without the EU spouse, uh, then you would have needed a visa. So it's kind of being in jail in a bit because you have to move all together each time. And every time you'll go at the prefecture for whatever admin stuff you'll, you'll be doing, um, not having a visa uh, makes them more, I mean, the guys, you know, um, the, 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 the guys at the prefecture makes them more noisy because, you know, they, they want to understand the situation. So having a visa and, and considering how cheap it is, uh, is usually better, although this could be avoided, but it comes with uh, restrictions. Can you explain that? Uh, at this point, the, the, the health insurance uh, requirements uh, for uh, a long-term stay visa application. You said that the third uh, uh, reason was the third thing, the terms that they're asking is the proof of insurance, right? Well, it's actually the insurance bit. So it, it's funny because we're usually very late in the process. Usually people, the first thing they think about is the property, obviously. Okay. They need to have an address in France. Uh, then they found out or they considered the visa application itself. And during that process, very often they discover about uh, the insurance bit that most of them are not aware of that requirement. And especially, uh, I mean, there is a requirement and it, it's kind of confusing. Even on, on the France visa website, uh, it's not very clear what's required because they say private health insurance. Sometimes they go with travel insurance, uh, Schengen policies, all that stuff, which is automatically rejected uh, because they need something which is very French specific. The wording for that in French is called a policy that's first euro. So basically it's something covering you from the first euro. Basically it means without an excess deductible, copay, coinsurance, whatever you name it, it needs to be uh, covered from the first euro. Uh, you need to be covered for in and out patient benefits you need to be covered, um, obviously, all across the Schengen area. You need to have repatriation included. Uh, there is a fun requirement because, in theory, you need to be covered up to 30,000 euros worth of medical cover in France. Although they do apply different rules, for example, in New York, they would expect you to meet 100,000 euros. Don't know the reason. Um, and, well, obviously, for the US audience, it seems like not so much, but in France, even a two, two month for, I mean, we've had a case uh, a week ago, a two month hospitalization was 17,000. So two months. 
Um, so uh, the French medical system is very cheap. So 30,000 is a lot, is a lot. So that's, that's basically when you need to meet. And um, what, what if a, a person has a pre-existing uh, medical condition, will that affect tremendously the insurance policy? So this is when it gets interesting because in theory, uh, the French government expects them to be insured uh, in full without any medical exclusion, without anything. So everything should be covered. The problem is uh, we all know that if you go private and you have existing conditions or medical history, uh, they won't be happy with that. So either they'll, they'll charge you a very steep premium uh, or loading or they'll end up excluding, uh, if you've had cancer recently, for example, or heart issues, they'll exclude the condition. So uh, so that being said, this is always possible of kind of meet the requirements, but you'd probably be looking at a 20,000 euros premium per annum or something like that. So it's very, very, again, even if you have to pay out of pocket in France, you, you'll never reach that kind of premium, uh, well, that kind of uh, expense anyway. So. Usually what most insurers do, uh, we're a broker, we're not an insurance company. So what, what insurers do usually is that they go with policies with something that we call a moratorium, which is basically an automatic exclusion of existing conditions. And they just pay out of pocket for whatever they have. I mean, we've had a US customer who had diabetes, for example, just to, to have a, a classic you know, like textbook example. I was concerned about this and I was like, yeah, well, he was on metformin and you know that kind of drug and he was paying quite a lot and was like yeah but in france that would be i mean we've had a look together and it would be um the, the whole drugs that he, i mean insulin metformin all the things he had to do was less than 100 euros a month out of pocket okay without insurance without social security so i was like yeah so it's probably best to go with the policy with automatic exclusion knowing that some insurance companies uh, will provide a documentation in a format that uh, will make the, the authorities happy. Basically, what the French consulate wants to see is that, you know, that this is typically French. What they want to see is a document that's laid out exactly the way they want. If you provide them with a document that meets their requirement, you know, like literally physically, like, you know, in terms of the design of the document, they'll be happy with it. But then obviously there is the expense side of things. So you're like, oh, wait, how would that be covered? And what if uh, I have a massive, uh, an emergency or an issue? So that's why policies with exclusions. So first, most of the time, you're probably better off paying out of pocket and, and keep a cheap premium. And if you really have something that's really bad, and uh, for example, that you know that would be cheaper uh, in the US, uh, which I doubt because French is, is really cheap in comparison. But even if you, the policy will include a repatriation clause, which is mandatory as well. So you'd be repatriated to your own country and can be treated there. When you say it's cheap, can you give us like a price range uh, for an applicant looking for a, a suitable one-year policy as an example? Um, oh yeah, well, well, obviously it depends that this is, but someone in his late fifties uh, is probably going to be 2000 euros per annum uh, <laughs> per person, obviously. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I laughed. Because that was, uh, you know, I've been in the US for like 17 years. So you said 2000, I was expecting per month based on the cost here in the US, but you say 2000 euros per year, right? Yeah, yeah, that, 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 that's per year. Obviously, the older one gets uh, the eye of the premium. But again, you have to consider, uh, we, we've created a plan specifically for French visa applications. And again, France is very cheap. A day at the hospital is um, 515 euros per day. That's the price in France. So basically 500 euros per day, it's the cost of an hospitalization in France. Um, so even if you stay, you know, for months at the hospital, and the more, the longer you, you stay, uh, you probably, the cheaper it gets in a way. So France is really cheap. A consultation, if you have to do an ECG consultation with a heart doctor with an ECG, is going to be 90 to 120 euros, for example. So obviously the premium of the policy matches that kind of reality. Can you uh, Fabien, guarantee that, that the policy will be accepted? Yeah, so, well, yes and no. I can guarantee that we do offer 100% money back in, in, in the unlikely, hopefully, uh, situation where the visa is denied. 
Uh, but the, uh, you have to understand that at the end of the day, uh, the visa is a political tool. Uh, well, you, we've seen this, or we're seeing, seeing this with Russia, for example. They've shut down the visa applications from Russia for obvious reasons. Uh, so we never, we can never say, never know what will happen tomorrow. Uh, and therefore, there is no guarantee that a visa will be accepted, especially if it's um, a business visa, because this one is, is even trickier. But that's why, um, for example, for the, the visa admin stuff itself, we always reapply for free in case of a denial. And for the insurance bit, we offer 100% money back guarantee in the uh, in the event of a rejection. We've never had a rejection. We've never had an issue with the visa since mid 2021, basically since Brexit, because the Brexit changed the rules a bit, even for the US citizens. But now that the rules are steady, and since mid 2021, we've had a 100% acceptance rate. But yeah, uh, we we cannot say for sure, but we'll refund. I mean, if anything happens in the future, we'll refund it as well. So once I'm a resident in France, um, can I get into the French healthcare system? And does that mean that I will no longer need my insurance? Uh, in that case, can I just take out insurance just for the first three months? So, so you mentioned three months because... Uh, you're correct. After 90 days, once you're, right. you've moved to France or you've been in France, you can apply for the French social security system. And everyone can, and actually has to, because if you intend to become a resident, you have to be part of the French system. This is not optional, uh, which is good because the French system is quite, quite, uh, is quite good as well. Um, so you, pr again, you probably will be into the system within, but by the end of the year, uh, before the visa expires, which will make the renewal easy because uh, you can use the French system plus top of health insurance instead of a private medical policy, which is even cheaper then. Um, the problem is you cannot go for a three month. I mean, I've, I'm seeing this very often and this is um, a source for confusion with many people because as they think they'll be able to get into the French system after 90 days, they may only need the policy for 90 days. So, and this cannot be further away from the reality for many reasons. The first one is you can apply after 90 days. You're not into the system after 90 days. So you're not covered. So it's probably much more than 90 days you're looking at. That's the first thing. The second thing is it doesn't change the visa requirement. The guys at the visa center, they'll want, they'll want to see that you're covered for one year. Because again, there, there are no guarantees that you'll actually manage to get into the French system within that first year. So if it takes three months for you to get into the system, good for you. You would have paid for one year, but you you, you also uh, be granted access earlier. So you're good. Good for you. But if one year from now you're still not into the French system, then you would have had uh, you would have been covered for the for the whole duration of your visa. And that's what they want to see. You have to be covered for the whole duration of the visa. That being said, there is a third thing that needs to be considered because some policies. They're usually more expensive, but some policies have a break clause that you can use uh, once you've been provided with the French social security numbers uh, or number, if, if you're just one, uh, you can use, uh, send the documents to the insurance company, which will break the policy so that you can convert this into a top of health insurance. This is possible, but again, it's we always assess this on a case by case basis. Most of the time it ended up being cheaper to go for a one year policy anyway. But again, um, everything exists. That, that's why I'm mentioning it. Yeah, so basically, you're recommending uh, you, you can stop the contract that you have, Provella, uh, once you are uh, accepted into the social security system in France. Not all policies can do that, but some can, yes. If there is a breakup clause, yeah, OK. No. Can, can you explain to us uh, why there is a complementary health insurance system in France and how does it work? Sure. Uh, it's actually funny because th this is a joke I like to, I like to make. Uh, even the French don't understand the French system. Uh, they just know it works. So they show, they show up at the GP for at a general practitioner or at the hospital and they basically know that they'll be paying no nothing or close to nothing. Uh, but they don't understand the system because the system is a bit confusing. Uh, the system works this way very quickly. But basically, the state has defined something um, I like to refer as an index, which is basically what they think something should be worth. 
So for example, the index for a consultation with the GP is 25 euros. Um, but obviously that would have been too simple. So the, the French government doesn't refund the index. Uh, it varies as well, but usually they refund 70% of the index. So most of the time, the index, uh, if you go for consultations, tests, hospitalizations, the index is quite close to the real life expenses, your experience. But um, if you go to some specialists, or if you decide actually to go to the highest end specialist, top notch doctors, you go to a private clinic, it's highly likely that they'll charge more than the index, much more. And that's that's where uh, top of health insurance comes, from, uh, comes in. We have policies, and that's why it gets so confusing, because you'll see policies with 200%, 300% cover, you're like, well, will it be refunded three times what I've paid? No, you're refunded up to three times the index, for example. So again, don't, don't bother, don't worry with the details. Uh, usually we, we advise something that fits well and most French natives will actually be happy with that types of policy. But that's why um, having just the social security, uh, the best social security uh, is a bit short in terms of medical coverage. Because the top of health insurance, and especially Macron has, has created a new set of rules, which is called the 100% Santé, uh, which is really brilliant. Because basically, if you have a mutual, so plus obviously social security, uh, you would always have an option that is 100% refunded, including dental cares, glasses, some very expensive stuff. Sure, there might be the metal based crown or things like that. But you will always be provided with an option free of charge. So the mutual, uh, uh, I mean, every French uh, native has a mutual. Everyone has one. So, and it's very cheap. You know, someone in his 50s would probably end up paying 50 euros a month for something like that. So it's, it's not so, again, well, it, you have a wide variety of ranges and different types of policies. But it's not very expensive. Thank you, Fabien. Before we take, we have so many questions from uh, the audience. Uh, that, sir, but before a few minutes, I want, I would like you to tell us again what far insurance uh, do exactly, because you mentioned the the health coverage, the visa application. But so basically, I feel like you're taking care of the uh, people who wants to immigrate in France from A to Z. Exactly, yes. So usually how it goes, we actually for the for the, the viewers of the webinar, we have a special offer. Um, instead of a 150 euros consultation, we offer a 90 euros consultation. Uh, I'll share the link at the end of the of the meeting. Um, we 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 take care of the whole process. So not necessarily us directly, but we, we like a broker for immigration. You know, whatever this is, immigration lawyers, vehicle import driving license exchange, and obviously the insurance. But so this way, uh, we take care of everything and we we make things as simple as Frenchly possible, basically. Oh, so let's go to the Q&A if you please. Uh, Christy is the first one who asked the, the question, does 401k funds count as proof of income or does it need to be cash in a savings account? Um, Unfortunately, you need to have this in a savings account. Yes. So you have to draw down basically, uh, well, 25,000 euros from the 401k plan uh, so that they'll consider it. And we have a, a question from Lise and Maynard. Would our insurance work for the insurance requirement? I, I, I guess it's not the case, but... Uh, would you, would you well, it, it, it depends on the policy. Most of the time, um, especially with US policies, most of the time it doesn't cut the bill because there are many uh, small things like the, the, um, the deductible on the policy or the copay that uh, is uh, an immediate turn off for the, uh, the visa um, uh, consultants. Um, there is also the problem of the level of coverage which is not comprehensive enough from French perspective. Uh, obviously it needs to be covered in France as well. There is no repatriation clause usually on American policies, obviously because you're a resident in the US. So there are many things that usually doesn't cut the bill. Um, but sometimes it does, but most of the time it doesn't. 
I'm happy to uh, to review it and you know give an independent review. Individually, it's pretty much the same question that Nicole is asking. Does the health insurance need to be provided via a home country, or is it something we purchase via French government specifically? No, no. Well, uh, I mean, as a broker, we we working actually with quite a lot of um, American uh, insurers. You know, like Signa, for example, IMG. Um, the problem is in France because we're working in different countries as well. But in France, um, they they're very expensive. From a French perspective, so you can come with a policy as long again as long as it meets the requirements. Still the same problem, but you can come to France uh, with a with a U.S. policy. Uh, it definitely works, uh, but it's highly likely that it's going to be super expensive compared to what you may have had uh, if you were to purchase this in France, for example. Mm -hmm. Uh, question, can I apply for permanent residence or citizenship in the future? If yes, what are the criteria and uh, how long does it take? Well, the short answer is yes. You cannot immediately, usually, again, usually, because the process varies depending on your file, how committed they see you are into the, your French residency. But basically, you, this is how it goes. Again, theoretical framework, it can vary. But it's just to give you an example. So the first year you have a visa, it's then renewed for one year and usually then renewed, extended for three years. And then you have the permanent 10 years uh, carte de séjour residency permit. And you can renew that residency permit every 10 years. There is actually no need for, to, to actually apply for French citizenship. After 10 years, you can apply for citizenship, but uh, there is no real requirement for this. Um, it's not mandatory. Um, you can actually renew the 10 years visa or the 10 years uh, residency permit pretty much forever. Uh, so that's usually what uh, our customers end up doing because it's much easier. Uh, but it is possible. But if you apply for French citizenship, you'll have uh, you'll have to go through tests, you know, language tests, uh, French history tests, and things like that, which you won't have to do if you just renew your residency permits. We have a question from Hélène. We have, uh, she said, the free health insurance that meets the, the French requirements as a retirement benefit. So we have not gone to the French system. If we get carte vitale, uh, which is the social security in France, will we have to pay social taxes to France? Well, it depends where the money is coming from. Um, there are two things to be, well, it's not directly in relation to the question, but it's important to understand that as a US citizen, one of the trickiest thing you'll experience probably opening up a bank account in France, because the US uh, requires that French banks send a copy uh, of your bank statement basically each year to the US for tax purposes. It's the only country that does that. So that for that reason, many uh, banks in France do not accept a US citizen. So I'm saying this because uh, you'll see where I'm going. Uh, then it depends on where the money is coming from. Uh, if it's money from a pension, then you'll pay the taxes in France, indeed. But not social taxes, you'll just pay the taxes, you know, national taxes. It's just because you're a French citizen and now you pay French taxes. If the money is coming from a business that you have in France and in France, not abroad, uh, then you'll pay social taxes on that business as well. If you are employed in France, you'll pay social taxes on your payslip uh, in France as well. So that's why I was saying it depends where the money is coming from. If you have money from savings and you have like dividends and you want to draw down on the on the dividends that are on whatever accounts, then the, the law in France says that you'll have to pay social taxes on this. But so basically you'll have to do the same as any other French citizen would have to do. So for example, if I withdraw money from uh, um, my savings where I have stocks, and withdraw the dividends, I'll pay social taxes on this. So you would not pay more, uh, and US citizen would not pay more, but they would have to pay. So, yeah. Hopefully it answers question the question. From a very specific question from uh, Ni Nikhil uh, Gopal, and, and I invite uh, our audience for very, very specific questions to uh, uh, schedule uh, an appointment with you, Fabien to go much deeper in, in the answer. I know that uh, during this webinar, you are giving general answers to specific cases also in this Q&A, but 
to go much deeper. I think it's uh, it much it's much better to schedule a a, a moment with you. Uh, Nicole is saying hello. I'm planning on moving to France shortly on a passport talent visa. He noticed that one might be eligible for expedited naturalization in two years under specific circumstances. Could you provide more cl clarification on what uh, is so-called uh, exceptional integration? So that, that yeah, sure. That, that's why I was saying there are the theoretical rules, and this is very French. Basically, what they do, whatever you want to do, uh, the French administration will assess your file based on, again, how committed. I'll give examples. Uh, in theory, you cannot apply for uh, being a French citizen uh, until, sorry, uh, yeah, said 10 years, until after the fifth year, so until six years, okay? Uh, but in real life, if you've done something, for example, again, just examples, uh, you've converted, I mean, from the first year, you've converted your license. Uh, the U.S. license to a French one. You you have set up a business in France. You, you your, your kids are at school in France. You've taken French classes. You know you build up a file where they can see you you you've tried your best to become as French as possible. Uh, again, this could change nothing, or they might see well. Okay, that guy is legit, and they'll actually provide you with better conditions. So it's not a direct answer, again, and it needs to be properly assessed, but it's just to say that this is how it goes. There is a theoretical framework, and then based on an individual basis, what the guy has been doing, uh, obviously based on the type of passport or visa. I'm saying, uh, just for the, the wording, they say the passport thing, because actually what they do, when you go at the physical interview at the visa center, they'll actually take your passport away from you, and you probably won't see it back for like a couple of weeks, important to know because actually the visa is part of the passport they stamp your passport somewhere and that's the visa okay so your visa is actually in the passport so that's why it says it's a passport visa okay so it's just for, to avoid wording confusion but yeah that, that's why i'm saying uh basically the more you do the more committed you are to the french relocation the, the faster things go and something i didn't say and the cheaper things will be as well because when you first come to france we, we've spoken about the visa, but for example, car insurance. So we can convert uh, the US insurance history. Obviously, the French system works very differently. But at first, you probably end up with policies. You know, very few companies will be able to accept a US citizen. But then after three years, you're basically French because in France, we only look at the past three years worth of insurance history. So then you have access to a wider range of policies. So the more time goes, the easier it gets and the cheaper it gets as well. So doesn't really answer the question. As you said, we'll need to go deeper. But this is to understand that, yes, this is probably possible, although you have to meet specific uh, circumstances. Uh, another visa-related question. What are the penalties if I overstay my visa? And also, can my visa status be changed while I am in France? So there are actually no penalties. Uh, it's just that if you are still in France while uh, with an expired visa, in theory, you are what we would call an OQTF. It's basically, uh, you should leave French territory. And if you are to go to the visa center again or to a prefecture or whatever, you, you have for a, a very hard time because they won't be happy with this. So th there is no really, like, there isn't a fine as per se but they won't be happy with this. And this could actually jeopardize um, the whole process, the whole thing you've made. Again, maybe you'll have circumstances This need to be assessed, but basically if you just overlooked and you know uh, the situation and exceeded your, st your allowed state, they won't be happy with it. Again, it depends okay. all on you, you've overstayed as well. If it's just a couple of days, they might turn a bl uh, blind eye on this. If it's more, no. Uh, in regard to the second part of the question, what was that? Sorry. Uh, what are the penalties first? And can the visa be changed uh, while I'm yeah. in Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. And actually, we do that very often uh, because, again, the, the first visa is the hardest to secure. So it's very, very common that we apply for a visitor visa at first and end up doing uh, a business visa during that first year. And so we renew this into a business visa 
or another type of visa. Maybe they found a job, so now it's, it's a work visa. So it's very common, doesn't impact anything. It needs to be taken care of properly, but it's completely doable. We have about uh, a little bit more than 10 minutes left, and I have so many questions, Fabien. We're going to try to address uh, as many as we can. Otherwise, I uh, encourage the people who won't get an answer to uh, schedule a, a meeting with you. Marcia is asking, can I run an online hobby business in France as a retiree on a visitor business, a visa, on a visitor visa, Reti in retirement with a so, visitor visa and uh, doing uh, some business on the side? So, yeah, well, uh, this is very common. And again, this is the kind of situation where we are like on the edge. So I would say it depends. What you should be doing is that if you apply for a visitor visa, you're not supposed to be working. Uh, so for the first 90 days, I would at least suggest you don't do anything so that you're compliant with the requirements. And then you can start your, your side hustle, I could say. Um, and then like, before the visa renewal, usually on the 10th month, because that, that's when you should be renewing your visa, 10 months in, then we reassess the situation and say, well, okay, how does it go? I mean, if, if you've made very little, it's probably not worth uh, mentioning. Uh, if you've made significant money, then we can switch to a business visa. Uh, but again, it's important to understand how much the person is already making, because if he's a retiree, he are, probably already has income as well which then will be part of the, 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 the business plan. So it is possible, uh, although I would still start with the visitor visa because it's it's easier to, to, to secure. And then eventually we may switch to a business visa uh, later on if actually the business was successful. Small thing to be noted here, because very important. Uh, if the business is set up abroad, then it's different. You can stay on a visitor visa. Well, in theory, no, but I mean, in real life, as long as that's a business abroad, even if you're getting money from that business, uh, from their perspective, you're not working in France. You are so operating. That's also, yeah, that's a way to get out of the problem, for example. Mm -hmm. Not saying it's, it's, it's relevant in that situation, but it's just to provide some of the options we have. Absolutely. Uh, you already answered the first of um, the second part is about the test that you mentioned. Uh, and he, he said you don't need on top of that to prove any fluent French. No, well, actually, this is well, this well, this is cool for me. <laughs> I won't lie. I mean, the core of a business we're working with people that don't speak French. This is why we exist in a way. So you can actually come to France and do not speak even a single word of French. It's just that, well, you'll have to pay the services of people like me or the consultants to get things done sometimes. But apart from the financial burden it may uh, come with, you can come to France without speaking French. And live. I mean, I have customers that, that, that have been living in France for sometimes more than 30 years and they don't speak a single word of French. It's interesting because that we mention uh, language because someone is very curious uh, is mentioning that your English is excellent and would like to know what is your secret. <laughs> well, I've lived in the UK for one year and I had a business associate who was younger than me, spoke very quickly and it was a matter of survival. <laughs> so, yeah, I had, to, I had to adjust. Only one year. Well, only, well, but then I've been working since 2015 with the English speaking community. So I'm speaking English more often than French. <laughs> I see. Uh, Nicole wants to know uh, for a long stay traveler visa, is there an age limit? Are you legally able to hold a job with a French company? That's the second so question. The, uh, you might have seen the news. Uh, retirement age is it's quite the rage in France right now. <laughs> um, but uh, no, there, there aren't any age limit. There is a hidden age limit because if you are, um, well, basically after 80 years old, it gets very tricky to get insurance. So we do have solutions. Well, I won't lie, they're not top-notch policies. They're basically a certificate of insurance you're purchasing to actually get the visa, but there are solutions. Um, and this is what constitute in a way the, the, the limit. But there is no limit. As long as you can provide all the documentation and they're happy with it, well, they'll be happy with it if it's compliant. 
uh, then you can come. Uh, the the oldest person we've had last year, uh, we've insured, well, we, we actually helped someone move to France was 90, 97. So wow, okay. as far as, I, as I'm aware of, uh, uh, if you're a centurion or more, I may not have, I may no longer have a solution, but unless you're a centurion, you should be fine. I would say, uh, um, uh, Julie is mentioning, uh, if you are a business in the US, you might be able to generate from my account in the US. So, uh, Julie is asking, taxes. do I have to pay taxes in the US as well as in France? So, we're working with tax consultants. Uh, this is a very specific question. Uh, honestly, I don't have the answer. I do know something. It, it depends, again, of the uh, country of residency. The, the problem with the US is that the US wants to keep a part of taxation on whatever income you have. So the answer is probably going to be yes, but to be taken with a pinch of salt because I'm, I'm not, I, I can point you to, to the direction of um, a tax lawyer and uh, which will help answer this uh, better. What's for certain is uh, the US and France has a dual taxation agreement. So if you pay on, on one side, you probably will not pay on the other side. So maybe you'll pay twice for a short period, but basically you'll be refunded because there is a dual taxation agreement. Okay. So if you're paying in the US, then they'll refund this on your tax, on your French tax income. Or if you're paying in France, you'll probably be refunded in the US tax income. I don't know about the specifics because this is not my line of work as per se. But I do know about that agreement, which doesn't answer the question directly, but does answer the fact that dual taxation is, in theory, not possible between France and the US simply because of the uh, dual taxation agreement. Victoria is a US citizen, and she said that her husband is French. Uh, we have Lee, uh, lived, she wrote, in the US for the past 40 years. Do you provide advice and assistance to become French citizen? French citizen, and what is the process for getting cardinal? Then, what is the time frame? You answered uh, some of, of it already, but if we can do a quick recap, that would be nice. Well, yeah, the short answer is yes. We can help for the visa for the French citizenship and the card vital, which is the top. So the the CPAM application, the French Social Security System application. The time frame, as I was saying, the problem is. It's important to understand that although when you're in the US, you apply for the visa, this is done in the US. So that's perfect. But when you are in France, uh, each, um, I would say, shire doesn't, you know, state, well, we don't really have state. So that's why I'm trying to find an equivalent. But basically, we call that departments in France. Uh, so each department uh, has a prefecture, which is where the admin stuff happens uh, in the department. And each prefecture, operates very differently from one another. The rules are the same, but some are very efficient, some are very slow, and sometimes they're very busy, busy sometimes they're not. So the problem is the time frame. I mean, Carte Vital, and for real, I've seen, well, I've seen three months. Uh, it's very, very rare, but I've seen three months. Uh, the average is more like six to nine months. But I've seen people two years in still not having a Carte Vital. So... The time frame is difficult because it depends on the prefecture and how well your file is built. The average time frame with our customers is more like six to nine months. Nine months is probably going to cut it. Yeah. I'm saying nine months because it's important. Again, you have to renew or apply for residency before the oh, actually during the tenth month. So, you, well, the overwhelming majority of the clients we're working with, they have the card vital. Well, the social security numbers, because usually the card vital comes uh, one month after. Usually they have temporary numbers and then the card vital. Uh, but usually they, they receive it um, between the eighth and the ninth month. Yeah. But again, to be taken with buckets of salt in this case, it depends on the prefecture. The last few questions, but the rule now is you have 60 seconds to answer. No more, Max. Uh, question from Tim. Earlier, you mentioned that family, spouse, visa holders cannot exit or come back to France easily without their partner. Does this apply if I choose to leave for a weekend to see friends in the UK? Or are there other particular situations during which this applies? 
So, yeah, that's why I was saying um, it's important. I mean, even if you can avoid it, uh, you're kind of in jail, so you probably will still want to consider uh, applying for a visa so that you're not stuck. The only thing you can do without the spouse uh, is to travel within the Schengen area. If you leave the Schengen area, which is the case of the UK, then you'll need a visa to come back or you need to be with your wife. If you leave to the UK alone and come back on your own without a visa, they won't let you in. Question from Mark. If living in France uh, under a long-term visa or permanent visa, the income is based only upon their pension and investments, would that income be taxed by both the US governments? So yeah, as I was saying, um, you'll be taxed in France, but then it gets specific. They have uh, reciprocal agreements and dual taxation agreements, which provide uh, prevents um, one from being taxed twice. So I don't know about the details, who will tax what and where will some, actually France is not that bad tax wise. You know, the, 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 the bad rep we have in France is, is mostly because of the social taxes. When it comes to national taxes, uh, it's not that bad. Uh, all considered. Um, so you'd probably be, be fine. Again, it, then we need to assess the situation to see exactly, but you will not be paying twice. If I get a one year long stay tourist visa, can I change halfway through the year to work to a work visa if I get a job? Yes, yes, you can. If you're in France or zero visa, can one get a job in France? Exactly the same question that was asked two minutes uh, apart. Yes, and well. the last one will be from Catherine. Hello, way artist, player, movie crew. Merci infiniment, she wrote. <laughs> um, well, honestly, the talent visa uh, is also one uh, very tricky to get uh, because obviously, if you're an international star or something like that, um, like, like we did, for example, for Brad Pitt or people like this who applied for visa a long time ago. Uh, this is going to be easy, but for, I would say, the general public or, or common people, it really depends on the situation. So that, then we need to assess uh, the situation and the globality of your uh, situation, because sometimes if it turns out that the uh, the visitor visa is actually something, if, if you if you can tick all the boxes for the visitor visa. Again, we might end up doing the visitor visa and then switch to the talent visa later on during the um, French expatriation, if it turns out you're doing well in France as well. But uh, yeah, it needs to be addressed. So the short answer is, it's possible, but this visa is very tricky. So there are no guarantees. So if, if we can actually go with the visitor visa at first, We'll do it because then this one is guaranteed. The, the QR code. And yeah, I'll share. To make thank you. It's important to make sure that uh, you are in the right hands and get the right expertise. We like to. And first uh, meeting. Uh, how long will that offer last? Is and uh, on uh, immigrating to France, or is it once you are ready to make the move? Um, you cut off a bit, so I'll, I'll try to answer what I've heard, but. Uh, yeah, so I've shared the QR code uh, with the link. I think we'll send an email afterwards so that you, you'll have the link as well. But basically, we, we, ha we have the offer for the consultation. Uh, the consultation can be made pretty much whenever you'd like, uh, even if the project in two, in two years' time, uh, you, can, uh, you can book a consultation. I'll explain everything. You'll have all the information you need. If you are ready to do the move or very close to it, I can even provide you with quotes from the partners we're working with. Again, we like a broker. We'll compare people like immigration consultants, lawyer. We will we'll, uh, guide you to the, the, the one that's the most relevant in your situation. Obviously, we'll also share some quotes for the insurance you'll need. Or you can also have a look on our website on FabDollInsure. 
And uh, yeah, uh, Fred was asking about how long the offer stands. Yeah, as long as you're, you're using the link, it's an offer for the webinar. So whatever this is now in one year's time, uh, the offer will stand. Thank you very much. Uh, once again, uh, we received questions about people at the beginning of the webinar uh, asking if they had to take notes uh, during the webinar. If there will be a replay. Of course, there will be a replay and uh, you're going to get all the information in the coming days on Frenchly.us. If you don't receive our newsletter yet, we strongly uh, recommend you to uh, register. It's free at the Frenchly.us. And once again, Thank you very much, Fabien, for your time and for your expertise. Thank you for having me.